Hi guys, Jordan with Motion Array, and today we're taking a look at the auto ducking feature in Premiere Pro. So let's get into it. So here we are in Premiere Pro, and we're gonna take a look at an easy way to adjust your audio in just a couple clicks. So when we say audio ducking, what do we mean? Well, it's the idea that when there's competing sounds, one of them ducks away to let the other take priority. What that looks like is something like this. So believe it or not, here at Motion Array, I actually do most of these videos here. We have our piece of footage that we want to hear, and when it finishes, we want our music to get louder again, to fill in the empty space. And then when the dialogue comes back in, we want to lower the volume of the music back down so that we can hear me speaking clearly again. Usually this is done by using keyframes and manually adjusting each one. And for just this one moment, the process shouldn't take too long. But if you have an entire 10 minute video with a bunch of these sorts of moments, it can take forever to do this for every iteration. Especially if you're doing an interview style video where you've got a subject talking and you want music to fade in and out constantly. But Premiere Pro has a quick solution that makes the process a lot easier. And it's found in the Essential Sound Panel. If you want to learn the basics of using the Essential Sound Panel, we have a video all about that, and it's this one here. Check it out in the description below. Okay, so step one is to go to your Essential Sound Panel, and you can find that by either entering the Audio Workspace, or by going to Window, Essential Sound. To make this work properly, you'll want to designate what kind of clips are what kind of audio. So for example, all of my dialogue clips are up here, while my music is here. And then there's a couple other pieces of audio scattered about. Whether or not you're using the Essential Sound Panel, it's always a great idea to keep your clips organized and distinguished. So let's assign our clips to the kind of audio they represent. Let's take our dialogue clips and mark them as dialogue. And mark our music as music. And with that, let's dive into our music file by selecting it. Now let's go down to the bottom here, and you can see that there's the label here for audio ducking. This is where the magic happens. Because we're in the music section here, when we apply the ducking parameter, we're going to be impacting how the music is lowered. You can select what your music file will recognize as something to duck against, like dialog or sound effects for example. And you can select multiple files to designate what combination you want your audio to duck against. But for right now, I'll just stick with dialog. From there, you have three parameters that will impact specifically how your music is ducked. Sensitivity, reduce by, and fades. Sensitivity will impact how Premiere decides what is necessary to duck out against. Reduce will impact specifically how much your music will drop out. The lower the number, the less your music will drop. And the more you tell it to reduce by, the farther down it will drop in volume. And Fade simply controls how gradually the audio goes from being normal to being ducked. With these three parameters, you can decide what you want your ducking to sound like. But you won't be able to check what it actually sounds like until you hit this button here to generate keyframes. This process could take a little bit depending on how much audio your computer has to chug through. But once it's done, everything that you've selected should be ducked accordingly. So for us, this is really good. If you're doing something simple like a sit-down vlog at home, then your living room could do just fine. But what if it's not what we preferred? How do you make changes? Well, it's easy. Just make sure your music is highlighted and adjust the sliders towards what you prefer. So I can make it a little less sensitive, make the music drop out more, and increase the fading just a tad. And then hit generate keyframes again, and your music will be updated to represent your newly desired changes. And once you find something that works to your liking, you can save it as a preset so that you can keep consistency or just save even more time with this awesome feature. Once you know the basics, it's pretty intuitive. And I'm sure that you're gonna find the longer your project, the more essential this will be to saving time and getting your video done faster. Well guys, I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, we've got lots of other tutorials here at motionarray.com. But guys, thanks so much for watching, and I can't wait to see you in the next video.